Hi, welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. Today we take a look at uh, Psalm 119, verses uh, 105 through 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your rules. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we have a, an introductory verse here to this one, the very first verse of this section. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, which really serves as a, uh, you could almost say as a summary verse for the entirety of Psalm 119. Uh, that's what we see coming throughout this psalm, is the idea that uh, God's law guides us. It shows us the way that we should go, teaches us how we ought to live as his people. But what I want to talk today, today a little bit about is uh, the swearing of oaths here. Uh, verse 106, I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. Uh, now, the psalmist here could have been talking about a lot of things as far as swearing an oath to uh, live according to God's word, but we as Christians make oaths. Uh, to the promises to live by God's word. Uh, the first one happened in our baptism. Uh, it was there that perhaps we were baptized as an infant, but uh, nonetheless, the promise was made on our behalf that we are renouncing uh, the devil, renouncing all his works and all his ways. Um, and so we made that promise in our baptism to not live as Satan uh, would have us live, not to live as uh, the world would have us live, but to live according to God's word. And then that promise is made once again, uh, and perhaps even a little bit more explicitly when we come to uh, the rite of confirmation. So I think it's a good thing to go through once again when we look at this. Um, the the, uh, the rite of confirmation, the questions that are asked by uh, your pastor and then that you give answer to. Uh, do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Uh, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Uh, and then we get into the creed. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? And we, we say, yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, etc. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, etc. Uh, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes. Do you believe or do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Yes. Uh, do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. And then we get to what really points to what we're talking about today. Uh, do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to, and this is the big one, do you t intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. And we respond, I do by the grace of God. We swear that we will live as God's people. We swear this oath here that we will live as God's people because uh, we have read his word, we have seen what he asks us to do, and we see the promises that he gives us. And so therefore, we say that we indeed will live according to that word. And the rest of the psalm really, or this section of the psalm really flows from that. Uh, verse 107, I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Um, we are afflicted in many ways. We're afflicted, first of all, by God's word, which shows us our sin, uh, and that afflicts us. But we're also afflicted by the outside world that looks at us and points at us and say, hey, why do you live this way? Uh, why do you live as a Christian? What's the point of all of this? Uh, and so, you know, we, 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 sh we point to the word of God and we say we're afflicted 
uh, by the way that we, we live in this world and the way that we are attacked by people in this world. Um, uh, verse 100, 110 gets to that as well. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I promise, O Lord, that I will not turn from your word, for you have redeemed me, and in you I have my hope, in you I have my identity, and therefore I will continue to cling to your word, O Lord. This is what we're praying in this psalm. We will continue to cling to the word of God because it holds promises that the, word, that the, that the world cannot give us. Uh, it holds the promises of the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation in Christ Jesus. The world can't give us that. And therefore, we will continue to seek to live as God's word would have us live as his people. And so we can say with the psalmist at the end here, I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end, to the end of time. As we said, in the, as we make that promise in our confirmation vows, we vow to remain faithful to God and his word, even to death, to adhere to it even to death, uh, because we know that uh, even though uh, this world may take our very lives from us, it cannot take that which God has sealed for us in Christ Jesus. Pray God's blessings on you this week, and we'll see you next week on Mondays in the Psalter.